Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you to Biostock for allowing me to present expression biotechnologies in the flesh. That's wonderful. My name is Ben Franzen. I'm the CEO of Expression Biotech, a uh, NASDAQ first North Gross market listed company uh, with all R&D operations in Denmark, where we call ourselves Expression Biotechnologies. First, our usual disclaimer, because we're uh, public listed and we have some forward-looking statement in this. I'll let you read that in details when we publish this uh, presentation after this. <clears throat> so we are a biotech company focused on developing vaccines against uh, fatal diseases uh, within infectious diseases in oncology. We have a high value pipeline. Uh, we have the technologies that are patent protected and we can produce the proteins that we apply using a proprietary technology and apply on a certain virus line particle technology. We have made more than 500 proteins over the years uh, using uh, the pro production system. And we address a market which is uh, uh, characterized by extreme growth because it's the vaccine market. And of course, since the pandemic a couple of years ago, this has grown uh, incredibly to several hundred billion dollars. Furthermore, with our vaccine focus in this field of infectious diseases and oncology, we have some near-term catalyst. At the moment, our COVID-19 vaccine is in phase three, further de-risking our pipeline, and we are moving towards a commercial launch of this asset here in the very near future. This is the pipeline as we show it, uh, led by the coronavirus vaccine, as I mentioned, it's in phase three. This is fully outlined into Bavarian Nordic. So I think in the Nordic countries, it's very much known that Bavarian Nordic, they have just initiated two months ago, a phase three trial in the US and in Europe. And this contains a technology from Expression Biotechnologies and an associated company that we own 34% of, which is called Adapmac, where the VLP technology comes from. Both our technology and the VLP technology we apply in our breast cancer vaccine asset, which is in preclinical stage, where we have documented preclinical proof of concept actually several times uh, here in 2022, and it's progressing uh, as planned towards a clinical trial in 2024. Furthermore, we have activities in influenza and malaria, which I'm not going to cover that much in due to time. Just saying that within malaria, we have a couple of, of clinical stage assets as well, which are, again, putting clinical evidence into our production uh, technology. <clears throat> First, some words about our breast cancer vaccine asset. Uh, this is characterized by one in eight women will experience this in their lifetime. And today, more than 600,000 women die every year from this. 25% of these overexpress HER2 receptors that are associated with this deadly uh, cancer type. The market is characterized by monoclonal antibodies today, which dominate this field, uh, making more than $11 billion of sales annually, known by the key brands like Herceptin and Pajeta. However, these uh, known monoclonal therapies come with some drawbacks, such as resistance. So it's known that over time, 20 to 30% of women undergoing monoclonal therapy will develop resistance to the therapy itself. There's a potential for heart-related uh, side effects, and the administration is super, oh, well, cumbersome, uh, requiring fr frequent quit, uh, visits to the hospitals, and it's very expensive. And basically, we have a HER2-targeted uh, breast cancer vaccine uh, with a vaccine approach that overcomes uh, some, if not all, of these drawbacks with uh, our internal antibody production that we apply in this vaccine. And the technologies we're applying are actually twofold. On the one side, we have our express system, which was the background for the establishment of Expression Biotech back in 2010. We have a proprietary production system based on S2 insect cells. These are fruit, fruit fly cells where we have a patented vector system for making complex proteins using this system. On the other side, we have the virus line particle technology, which is residing in this company at DAPVAC, which we own 34% of, and which is spun out of Copenhagen University. 
And the idea is that you can couple any protein of interest on the surface of this VLP and thereby making a highly immunogenic molecule. And we use, of course, our S2 technology to make the antigens both with respect to the COVID-19 vaccine as well as, the, as, the, as this HER2 uh, breast cancer vaccine and apply it the same manner on the surface of the VLP. And I want to highlight a recent scientific publication. It actually was just uh, published uh, last month. It's super good because during the last year, I've been uh, talking about our proof of concept, preclinical proof of concept data that are shown here. And now it's also public, publicized in a very nice article. We've made these studies in mice together with uh, state-of-the-art animal models performed at the University of Bologna that we have a very nice research collaboration with. And we can see that with our HER2 directed vaccine approach, we can inhibit growth of tumors and we can uh, even uh, <laughs> in, 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 inhibit the emergence of tumors. And then overcoming uh, resistance is also an ability we see in in vitro assays uh, with these studies. So all super important in terms of this vaccine profile. Now we are on path towards a clinical trial in uh, 2024. Uh, we have the GMP manufacturing set up with the right contract manufacturers. We have the preclinical safety studies planned in two different species. Uh, we expect in the middle of next year, in 2023, to have performed the TUC studies so we can file the clinical trial application in the second half of 2023. So all this on pass towards the first in man uh, study in 2024. Turning into our coronavirus vaccine assets, uh, there are also some known drawbacks with the existing vaccines, uh, the duration of the effect primarily, also the very expensive cold chain uh, logistical handling of current vaccines and then the development of mutants. And we have with our uh, vaccine approach actually uh, ability also to overcome these drawbacks. The good thing is that we've done this already. Uh, we started this in February 2020, got some super encouraging preclinical data in the spring of 2020 that uh, made Bavaria Nordic uh, licenses in the summer of 2020. They have taken over this project. They have financed a phase two trial, super encouraging uh, uh, vaccine results. They've just very recently, actually last month, shown that from the phase two data, uh, after six months, you still have a very high level of neutralizing antibodies, also across variants of concern. So this is all, again, uh, super encouraging. And on the phase three trial, Bavaria Nordic have just started that uh, here in September going to enroll 4,000 uh, test people, uh, 3,000 in the US and 1,000 in Europe. Uh, and we'll see how this progresses here in 2023. Hopefully, uh, we are in a commercial stage here within the next one to, to one and a half years. And this means that there's some cash flow coming into expression from this particular asset. It's a bit difficult to explain here because the licensing deal between Bebera and Nordic and at that back is the, the core licensing deal, the company that we own 34% of, they have the, the licensing deal with Bavaria Nordic, and you can see the financial terms to the, to the left. Um, and then expression also uh, granted at that back a license to our S2 production technology, because this is also a technology in the vaccine, also providing income. But the 34% ownership, of course, is super important for, for this asset. And bearing in mind, uh, there's potential income from this end of next year uh, and going onwards. We believe there's a strong market for this. And I say we uh, are basically uh, reciting uh, Bavaria Nordic in this. Expressions, uh, cash balance is very sound. Uh, you can see how we've evolved over the last three years. And the reason for the very big change is, since 2020 is that we made a strategy shift in 2020, turning us from a primarily a service provider where we offered making recombinant proteins using our S2 technology into a genuine pipeline-focused biotech company with a focus on infectious diseases and cancer. And we made uh, a very big uh, cash uh, rights issue in the autumn of 2020. 
Uh, and this year, in the spring, uh, we made another uh, cash, ra uh, ca cash uh, raising uh, process where, uh, with the rights issue. And right now, at the end of Q3, at the end of September, we had the second highest cash position uh, in the company's history. So that bodes well for our ongoing activities. <clears throat> And they are highlighted here. Uh, so very briefly, uh, when it comes to the coronavirus vaccine, as I mentioned, it's all in the hands of Bavaria Nordic. They have conveyed that they are progressing with the enrollment in the phase three trial. Uh, and as soon as they can, they're going to initiate a rolling regulatory submission in 2023, allowing for potential commercial uh, COVID-19 vaccine with, this, with these unique features uh, in one to one and a half years time. On the breast cancer uh, asset, which is the one we're focusing most on within expression biotechnologies, as I mentioned, we are progressing on the GMP manufacturing uh, scaling activities and the preclinical safety studies are on uh, plan with the readout from the TOC studies in the middle of next year so we can file the clinical trial application during second half next year. The aim is to get into the first clinical trial in 2024 and we put in here outside out licensing window opens because we are not that ambitious that we believe we're going to progress the clinical development all through including uh, phase three. We're going to try to out license this at some point in time where it has a, a good value uh, during the clinical development. And in influenza and malaria we are still on track with the activities we have there. I'm wondering what do you expect the demand to look like for COVID-19 vaccines in the future? Sorry. The yeah. demand for a COVID-19 vaccine. The, how, the will demand, they, how will it look? I think the demand continues to uh, be very, very high because the current vaccines, they uh, don't apply all over the world. I just mentioned the cold chain handling of the current messenger RNA, which are the most dominating vaccines. And we need better vaccines that can be uh, stored at room temperature as well, like ours. Uh, so there's a huge, huge market for that out there. And well, let's see also what happens in China. It's a very, very interesting market. And they have closed down for all uh, responses to the pandemic. Um, I'm uh, very curious to see how that uh, evolves uh, and uh, if our vaccine can play a role there as well. The demand is going to be high for many years still. And is China a market that you will go into or which countries I'm are you I'm just mentioning it as for? an example. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and another question is, um, the business model looks a little different for the different vaccines. Could you elaborate a bit on why it looks like that? For... Uh, I'm not completely sure I understand your, your question, but the business model in general is that we develop vaccines, high value vaccines, uh, but we still have our service business. We still actually also uh, make recombinant proteins for clients who come by. Uh, so, so we have revenues from that. But I have to admit that, that the revenues coming out from, from that, they are not as high as to cover the costs that we are now incurring to bring our high value assets uh, forward. So we have kind of a two legs on, on that, but I'm okay. highlighting the biotech, uh, the pipeline focus because that's a key key value. And as you mentioned, you conducted a rights issue earlier this year. For how long will you last on that money? Well, as we uh, said when we made that, this is going to cover us all through uh, mid next year because then we have the the. Um, there's the TOX data and we can find for the clinical trial application. Going onwards, we uh, recognize it will take some uh, further cash to, to bring a, a clinical stage asset forward. We'll see how that goes. I see. Then I will let you off the hook for this time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.